welcome back as you can see sitting in front of you I have six pieces of brass the brass here is sitting in front of you is the 38 special which is basically a very um, good round for self-defense for women more specifically it was used years ago for law enforcement it's uh, basically a smaller shorter less powerful version of the 357 Magnum this cartridge works very well in 357 Magnum uh, revolvers when you want a load that is not as hot as what a 357 Magnum would be so I'm gonna take you through, through the process with me of some of the things that I do and I'm gonna share some of the techniques that I use to reload this cartridge on my bench I have several items laid out in front of you I'll be talking about these items in a little bit more detail as as this video goes on I'm gonna try very hard to not make this a real long video I have a tendency to do that from time to time but please bear with me I'm gonna try to get all the good information out there to you in a fairly short video but first things first and that's these safety glasses right here so let's go ahead and get them on make sure they're clear of obstructions that you can see good through them there's not they're not all scratched up because you don't want anything that's gonna obstruct your vision so I'll talk to you here soon and I'll we'll get this uh, cartridge will start to load it the first thing that I like to do when it comes to loading this 38 special or the 357 Magnum or any reloading for that matter is I like to take the brass and very quickly I like to inspect it I'm looking for tears I'm looking for bulges I'm looking for anything that might show a sign of a bad piece of brass tears along the neck here along the mouth uh, maybe a primer bulging out that could be a couple of things that could cause that it could be a weak primer pocket it might be uh, the load was too hot but I'm just basically going through very quickly and I'm checking these this, this brass out this is a step that a lot of people overlook but it's very important so I'm sitting here I'm just inspecting this brass just want to make sure that the brass I'm using is good brass it doesn't take a long time but don't skip this step everything looks good what I like to do now is I like to lubricate my brass I'm getting ready to take it and put it on the press but I like to lube it there's a couple different methods that you can use one of them that I really like is this DCL this is Dillon case lube I usually use this a lot if I'm doing large batches of brass like maybe 50 rounds or 100 rounds uh, it's really good stuff it's got two components in it it's got lanolin and an isopropyl alcohol works really good because the lanolin is used to lubricate the brass and the alcohol is used as a propellant to send the lanolin and then once it coats the cases the alcohol will evaporate off and what's left behind will be the lanolin first thing that you're gonna need obviously is the safety glasses but I already have them on first thing you're gonna need is dyes okay and you're gonna need a press one big question that people ask me let me open this up and show you here this die set is a three die set some pistol dies come in a four die set and they do the same thing as what this three die set would do a lot of people say well what's the difference between a three die set and a four die set well really there's not really any difference but 
the three die set, one of the dies does two functions, whereas the four die set are more geared for somebody who has a progressive press. If you're going to be using a single stage press, I would recommend, whether it's rifle or pistol, getting the die set that has the least amount of dies. So if you can get by with a pistol cartridge on a single stage press with a three die set, I'd highly recommend that. If you're a progressive loader, I'd recommend going with the four die set because like I said again you have four different functions working independent of each other. One thing that you'll need you'll, you must have is a shell holder. and The shell holder has the appropriate notch in the bottom. This notch will fit into the corresponding groove inside the ram of your press. So basically you take your shell holder like this and you push it in with your thumb and it'll click into place. The job of the shell holder is very simple. It's very simple. It holds the brass. That's all it does. Now you notice I haven't lubed the brass yet. That's because I don't want to get my hands uh, dirty before I insert my decapping die. So I'm going to put this decapping die, which is noted by the pin on the bottom, into the press. This die does two operations. It resizes the full length of the brass from the top to the bottom, lengthwise here, and it also knocks out this old spent primer. So to install this die, I'm going to raise the rem all the way up, and I'm going to thread the die down until the die body touches the shell holder. This is the die body till I feel it touch. Once it touches, I lock the die lock ring down. When you lock these lock rings down, they don't have to be locked like really tight. Snug is fine. So I have the die installed. Next thing I'll be showing you is how to lube the brass. Okay, I have my brass sitting on the table. I already showed you the DCL a minute ago, the Dillon Case Lube. But today, we're going to be using a different kind of lubricant. We're going to be using Hornady Unique. This is a really good lube. There's many options that you can use to lube your brass. A lot of people say, that, and technically they're correct, these carbide pistol dies do not require you to lube the brass. However, I still do it anyway. I feel like it doesn't hurt anything. So I just take a little bit on my finger and I rub it around on the brass. You don't have to be real generous with it. You want it kind of, kind of a, a thin coat. If you get too much on one piece of brass, there's a couple things that could happen. It could dent if you're doing like a rifle cartridge, like a 223 or a 30 out 6 or something like that, and you have too much of this sizing lubricant, it could put little ripples around the neck of the case, which would be basically around around this area, the shoulder and the neck area of the case, right, right around here on the shoulder. So if you're lubing something like a, a bottled down rifle cartridge, make sure that you're very conservative with the amount of lube that you're going to be using. There's other methods you can take, uh, like uh, for example, I think it's RCBS, they make a little lube pad and basically you, you put all your brass down there and you roll them back and forth and it puts, for the lack of a better term, it puts oil on them. And it works pretty good. I used to use that a long time ago. So now I have all these pieces of brass lubed. My next step is to use this first die, this decapping and resizing die. So I'm going to insert the brass into the, into the press and I'm going to raise the ram up. What will happen is the, the, as the brass comes up, the ram, it, the little decapping pin is going to knock the old primer out. And if you look very closely right in this area, there's a hole in here. And that old primer will come down inside the ram and it will shoot straight back into this little area, this little recessed area. I don't know if you can see that. I'll try to do it slow.
I saw it there. So I basically I've just resized the full length of that brass and I've knocked out the old primer. While I'm here I'm gonna take a screwdriver just very quickly and I'm gonna clean out the primer pocket. Not, not that big of a deal. Just a very quick cleaning of the primer pocket. So I'm decapping and resizing. Cleaning the primer pocket. It doesn't take much. If you're working on your press and you feel it jam up or you feel something that feels not right, stop what you're doing and look. Don't just sit here and like if this binds up, don't just crank harder. I've seen a lot of people do that. It drives me crazy because there's no need to do that. So I'm just getting this excess carbon out. Some people like to take a primer uh, pocket uniforming tool and it basically cuts the brass out of the primer pocket and makes them all the same depth and everything and that's that's something that I'm definitely going to be looking into uh, in, the, in the future here. So I'm basically taking all these pieces of brass raising the ram, knocking the old primers out and resizing the brass and cleaning the primer pockets. So that's the end of the first step, decapping. So I have all six of them ready to go. Next step, next step, we will be trimming the brass. Okay, now that we have these cases decapped and resized, and we've already cleaned the primer pockets, it's time to trim them. And one of the best ways that I've found to trim pistol cases are these little trimmers that you can buy from Lee. They come caliber specific and they basically thread onto this cutter and what you'll have is you'll have your drill and inside the chuck of your drill you'll have the appropriate shell holder and you'll have a little a little collet thing that goes into your drill. So you, you put the shell holder, it'll come, it'll come with the shell holder and it'll also come with the uh, cutter, or excuse me, the length thing itself. Not the cutter, but the, the length. So you basically put the shell into the chuck on your drill. And you sit here and you, you push this through until this tip of this cutter uh, length thing touches this collet I guess you could call it and it'll trim your brass for you so once you trim them I like to use a deburring tool to just gently deburr the outside of the case mouth nothing too crazy and also the inside nothing too crazy if you do the inside you don't want to take too much material out of the inside of the case mouth So that's one, and I'm basically going to go through and I'm going to do all of these. Just trimming them to the appropriate length. These trimmers work really good. I, uh, you can also use a lathe style trimmer. Um, the lathe style trimmers, in my opinion, they work really good, but they're a lot more expensive and they're, uh, these do just as good. The lathe style trimmers work better if you're doing a large amount of brass to trim. You know, if you're only doing you know 50 or something like that, these trimmers work really good. One thing that I want to show you is when you compare, when you put these two pieces of brass, I don't know if you can see, but the one that's in the drill, you can see around the mouth, it's very shiny because it's been trimmed. But these little trimmers, they work really good. So if you're doing like 50, maybe 100 rounds at a time or something like that, you could probably get by with these. If you're going to do a bucket of 500 rounds of 223 or something, you know, I'd recommend getting a lathe style trimmer. It's going to save you a lot of time. It's going to make the process a lot easier. 
on a case like this uh, 38 Special, 357, 44 mag, 45, any of those uh, straight walled cases, well, more specifically if it's a revolver straight walled case, the trimming itself is not that important because these 38 Special cases have uh, the head spaces on the rim of the case. So it's not that big of a deal because they're housed inside of a cylinder and head space ain't that big of an issue. But I trim them anyway. I don't trim these every single time. I trim them every second or third load. And I trim it more, more for the reason of getting consistency as far as my the way the case comes in contact with the cantilever on the bullet and stuff like that. That's really why I trim them more than anything just to establish that that uniformity. After I trim them I like to take my little brush here and just run it in and out of the brush just to make sure that there's no foreign debris inside of these cases that's gonna hurt us not that big of a deal but I like to do this if there was some dirt in there there might have been some spider webs or something maybe I didn't tumble these cases whatever the case is I just like to clean these make sure they're ready to go don't want dirty you know spider webs and stuff dirt or whatever inside of these cases some people take these little brushes and they attach them to their drill and they just use their drill to do it. That works good too. So that's basically all there is to it as far as trimming is concerned. So I'll take a quick pause and next time I see you we'll be belling the case mouths. Okay I'm back. I'm going to be using my case and I'm going to be using a 152 grain Lee, uh, excuse me, Lyman cast bullet. But right now, if I try to put the bullet into the brass, it doesn't fit too well. So that's what this next step is for. This next step is basically going to take the top of the case mouth. So if you have the case mouth like this, it's going to open it up a little bit so that these bullets will go into the case mouth very easily. So I'm going to remove the decapping and resizing die. And I'm going to insert the case mouth expansion die. Again, I'm going to raise the ram and this shell holder is going to touch the die body. When you bell or case mouth expand your uh, brass, you do not want to get over excessive as far as how much case mouth expansion you give them. You just need enough for the bullet to sit in there. I'm going to raise it up and check it out. See, it might it might be just enough. I don't know. You don't want it to be sloppy. I have all these settings backed out all the way. So I'm going to just go in small increments. Raise the RAM and I'm going to check it. You know, It doesn't have to be anything you know, crazy. If you go too much on your, on your case mouth expansion, you could have problems with the life of your brass because you'll be stretching it, unstretching it, stretching it, unstretching it. And it's going to be excessive as far as the amount of work that you're going to put on the brass. So when you get to this step, don't do too much. A little goes a long way on this step. I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can see a little more about what I'm doing. So I'm basically just coming up into the die and it's going to build the case mouth. Now right there that looks perfect. Notice how the bullet just kind of fit in there. It's not like sloppy falling in there but it's it's just enough. So I'm going to go ahead and lock. I'm going to hold this adjustment screw on the top. I'm going to hold this belling screw because when I tighten this lock nut I don't want this setting to change.
and then I'm going to give it a mild little snug on this just to tighten it up a little bit. It doesn't have to be crazy. So again, we're taking the cases and we're just getting it where it just barely fits in there. Nice and easy. Nothing crazy. Like I said, you don't want to overwork that brass. It's important to do this step before you prime the cases. If you prime the cases first and then you do this step, you're actually going to have problems because you might push a primer back down and unseat it a little bit because of the air pressure involved inside the case as you bell the case mouth. So make sure the priming step comes after you bell the case mouths. Don't do it before. You could get yourself in a pickle doing that. So that concludes the step of case mouth expansion. Now I'll talk to you about priming. This paper has information on it that I've written down prior to starting this video. Basically it tells you what the cartridge is that I'm going to be loading, which is 38 special. It gives me a trim length, gives me an overall length, that'll be the length of the cartridge with the bullet, and it tells me what bullet I'm going to be using. It's a 152 grain semi wad cutter cast bullet. I'm going to be using Winchester small pistol primers, and this is going to be the load that I'm going to use. Unique powder by Alliant, right here. And the book says I can go between 3.4 and 5.1 grains. I'm going to throw these about 4.2. We'll talk about that in a minute. If I go up to 5.4, that's a plus P round. That's a hot 38 special. And I've wrote down that these have been trimmed. So it's, it's a good idea to have a little paper like this with the loads that you're working on so that when you're finished, you can put this with the loads. So let me get back to priming. I mentioned on that paper that I'm using Winchester small pistol primers. I already have my priming tool here. I use the Lee Auto Prime tool. I have the appropriate shell holder in there and I have some primers inside. So I'm going to insert the case into the priming tool and I'm just going to squeeze with my thumbs and what will happen is it's going to seat a primer into the case you see me touching it with my finger that's because I want to feel the primer as far as how deep it's set you don't want a primer that's sticking up out of the case you want those primers to be seated nice and flush or just a little bit underneath flush when you're doing this priming don't have this top of the case mouth pointed up at you or pointed at something or someone that you wouldn't want it to accidentally go off and, and hit. If a primer goes off, that's where it's going to go. So you want to think about that while you're doing this. This tool works really good. There's other ways that you could do it. Like some presses, you know, you can do your priming on the press. They make dies that are uh, used if you wanted to prime you know using their little die but I prefer the hand method it works good for me and I can feel everything exactly uh, what's going on with that case uh, another thing I like to do in the priming step is I like to feel how hard it is to get the primers in if I feel one going real loose I might discard that piece of brass because it might have a loose primer pocket and I, the last thing I want to happen is for a primer to pop out when the bullet goes off. So that's priming. So I have all six of these done. They're all primed, ready to go. Next step, we're going to shoot, shoot some powder in there. So just another quick reminder, I want to note the amount of powder charge that I'm going to be using. In our case, we're going to try to shoot for around 4.2 grains. So I have my powder measure already loaded with uh, Alliant Unique Powder, and I usually like to set the powder down by the uh, powder measure so that I know what powder I'm using. I have a small 
digital scale Frankfurt Arsenal that I'm going to be using. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to charge these cases. So I'm going to put my bowl on the scale and I'm going to turn the scale on. And what's going to happen is the scale is going to zero to that bowl. Now I'm going to come dispense a load of powder and we'll weigh that load. 4.0 so that's fine this uh, funnel has a little this cup has a little funnel I can just put the funnel inside the case mouth and very carefully I can insert the powder into the shell another way is and I'm going to set these over here is I can take a funnel and I can do it with that too. So I'm basically weighing each one and it looks like it's throwing right around four grains which is fine. So we have four grains of powder which isn't much. It's a pretty light load but like I said I can go down to 3.4 if I wanted to so we're throwing right up right out four grains so these would be fairly conservative loads nothing crazy I just make sure my bowl zeroes every time that's why I keep putting it on the scale this powder measure, by the way, does a great job. It makes the job really nice. Another technique that you can use if you want to do powder is you can turn your scale off, put a piece of brass on the scale, turn the scale on and it'll zero to that brass, and then you can throw the charge directly into the brass and weigh it. Be careful though, because if you put another piece of brass on there, like right now it tells me 0.5 grains, that's because the brass might be different weights. So I'm going to zero again to this piece of brass. It's zeroed. Let's throw a charge. Take a look and see what we have here. Perfect. 4.0. So I have all my six cases charged. Next step, we're going to seat some bullets okay now I have my six cases right here I'm gonna use my little flashlight and I'm just looking down into the tops of the cases to verify that the powder level looks consistent with each other I'm looking for some that might have high powder low powder anything like that I just don't want one that's too hot or one that's you know a short load and they all look fine so now I'm getting ready to seat bullets I'm going to take out the case mouth expansion die and I'm going to insert the bullet seating slash crimp die because that die does two operations. Remember we bailed our case mouths out so now we have to put the uh, seat the bullets and crimp the case back so to insert this die I need to take a loaded charged case and insert it into the press I'm gonna raise the ram all the way up and I'm gonna thread the die down until it comes in contact with the case okay once it touches the case I'm going to back the die out upward counterclockwise about a quarter of a turn and I'm going to lock the die lock ring. The reason that I backed the die out a quarter of a turn is because I wanted to take the crimp feature away from the die at this point in time. Now I'm going to get a bullet, put the bullet in, raise the ram. From here I'm going to seat the bullet a little bit and now I'm going to start working on getting my bullet seating depth down. Just by making small increments 
until I start getting close to the desired seating depth that I'm looking for. The closer you get, the smaller the increments need to be or the smaller the adjustments need to be on your bullet seating stem. So the desired length for the overall length was 1.460 inches right here. Overall length 1.460. So I'm going to take my digital calipers and I'm going to look and see where we're at. We're at 1.52 right now. So we're a little bit long. So I need to go down a little bit more. So I'm going to turn this clockwise. And I'm going to measure again. 1.49. Getting closer. When you make these adjustments on your bullet seating stem, make sure that you do them in small adjustments. 1.48. It's kind of like cutting a board. If you cut a board too short, the board is just too short. You can't go back and add wood just like this. You can't go back and, and put, you know, something together. You can't put, you know, you can't unseat a bullet. So we went a little bit far. We're a little bit short, 1.455 which is going to be fine. So now we've established our overall length which is just a, a, a tiny bit under what we wanted but that's fine. It's not that big of a deal. Now what I want to do is I want to take the die and I want to put a little bit of a crimp on it to get rid of that case mouth expansion and put it back. So to do that I'm going to undo all my bullet seating step adjustments. I'm going to back this all the way out and I'm going to raise the ram. I'm going to unlock the die lock ring and I'm going to, with the ram in, this, in the air, I'm going to lower the die back down until it touches the case. The reason I had to undo the bullet seating depth was because when I would go to thread the die back down to touch the case, that may have changed our overall length. It may have seated the bullet more. So I don't want that. So now I'm going to go down with the ram, go about a quarter of a turn, and run the cartridge through. And I'm checking it to see if there's a crimp on it. One way to tell if the bullet is going to work well is to check it on a case length gauge. It's working pretty good. Let me give it a little bit more of a crimp. And check it again. I want it to fall in here nice and easy. Because that's the way it's going to be in my revolver. It's going to fall in there nice and easy. I still want just a little bit more. See what we got. You don't want to give it too much because if you give, give it too much, you could actually hurt the cartridge by buckling the case. So I think that's good. We're going to go ahead and lock this setting down. I'm going to raise this ram up. The reason I'm raising this ram up is because I want it to lock this die in place. I don't want it to adjust it all. And I did back it out just a little bit because I got a little much crap. Now I have the crimp feature established on the die and I'm going to lower the bullet seating stem back down until it touches the bullet and I'm going to lock the bullet seating stem lock nut. But before I lock it, I'm going to back this out about a sixteenth of a turn because we were just a hair long. Then I'm going to tighten up this bullet seating stem lock nut. Now this die should be set to do two things. It should seat the bullet and crimp the bullet all in one motion. When you put a piece of brass in the press and you're getting ready to seat a bullet, make sure without a doubt that that brass has powder in it. So now we've seated the bullet. Let's check the length. 1.458. Perfect. So we're just under what we need. Check the crimp. 
headspace, everything looks good. So from here, I'm going to zoom in a little bit and I'm going to seat some bullets because my die is now set. So again, I'm taking a loaded charged case, a cast bullet that I've made using the Lyman bullet molds. It makes a very fine bullet. They shoot great. It's kind of a blend between 158 and 150. These are they, they come out to 152 grain uh, weight of these bullets. They shoot really well. There's no need for a gas check on these bullets because the velocity is not that fast. Especially at this low of a charge. I'm guessing we're getting around seven or 800 feet per second. So now I have the five bullets seated. Excuse me, six of them. <laughs> now I'm going to check them. That one fits great. As long as they go in this case length gauge well, that's all I'm asking. That's going to mean that they'll go into that revolver real well. These bullets, they shoot really well. Whoops, dropped one on the floor. I'll get it here in a second. Well, there you have it. There's six rounds of 38 Special semi wad cutter, 152 grain bullets. These shoot really well. Last thing I like to do is take a little rag, just kind of clean them up. They, these, this uh, round was very popular from 1920 till about 1990 a lot of the uh, policemen carried this it was also used in World War One very popular round in America because it had low recoil and it was pretty good at, at you know it had some pretty decent stopping power so I'm gonna take this uh, paper with my recipe if you will and I'm gonna keep it with the rounds and this concludes your video for 38 Special. I hope you enjoyed the video. Feel free to leave comments. Feel free to subscribe to my channel. And again, thank you for watching. And I hope you guys have a good day. Bye-bye now.